had barely come to the conclusion when I heard the front door shut, and I knew that the count had returned. He didn't come straight to the library like normal, so I cautiously went back to my room and caught him making my bed. This seemed odd to me, but it only confirmed what I had been thinking this whole time. There weren't any servants in the house. Later I saw him through the chink of the hinges of the door. He was setting the table. I was assured of it, because if he is doing all these things, that means no one else is doing them. This scared me, because if no one else is here in the castle, that means the Count was the driver that brought me here. This is a terrible feeling and a terrible thought, because if this is true, then he was able to control the wolves by only holding up his hand to what? Silence them? How was it that all those people from Bistrids and the men in a car on the way here had a deep fear for my life? What did it mean then of giving the crucifix, garlic, wild rose, and the mountain ash? But thank God for that amazing woman who gave me that crucifix round my neck. It gives me much comfort and strength when I hold on to it. In the meantime, I have to figure out all I can do about the count, because it'll help me understand what I'm going up against. Tonight, I have to turn the conversation on him without making him suspicious about me. The following night, Dracula, the night before, had asked me a bunch of questions involving hiring more than one lawyer and more technical questions about the hiring business in England and proceeded to ask him to stay in this extremely creepy place for another month, when I really want to leave as soon as possible. But all I can do is comply with my customer, but the Count graciously has allowed me to write to Mina and Mr. Hawkins. I write to Mr. Hawkins in a business matter, knowing he will read it. And I write to Mina in code, knowing he won't be able to read it if he tries to. As I am writing my letter, as is Dracula, I notice that they are addressed to Whitby, Varna, Budapest, and London. Dracula then tells me he can't stay up all night again because he has work to do elsewhere. But he does not specify where. But he warns me not to wander around the castle and fall asleep anywhere but my own room. Once I get back to my room, I look out the window to enjoy the night landscape, but there is enough moonlight to see the side of the castle. Then I notice some movement out of the corner of my eye. And to my shocking surprise, I see the Count scaling down the side of the wall, head first. May 15th. I watched the Count scale out the window again tonight, and it was totally insane and creepy. So I took it upon myself to explore some more of the castle since I knew that the Dracula was out. I found a lamp and lit it, and found an old unlocked room, and took it upon myself to look and wander around in it. And it absorb the untouched beauty of it that was coated in dust and I write down all that has occurred in the past couple of hours. May 16th. I feel as if I stay here that I'm going crazier and crazier and the only thing that has kept me sane this entire time has been recording in this journal. I say this only from the insanity that went on tonight. As soon as I finished writing my journal in that wonderful room, I decided that since I am so exhausted, to take a short nap in that dusty room, even though the Count had advised me not to sleep anywhere but my own. But I feel as if I've only been asleep just a few moments, but then I awake feeling like someone is watching me. It was three very sexy women. Standing in the moonlight, their skin is almost as pale as the moon, but their lips are as red as blood. I can't help but stare at them and wish one of them would come over and kiss me. But at the same time, I feel the urge to run in the pure repulsion against them. These are the bad feelings, for I have a beautiful, amazing fiancé back in London, Mina Murray. As I lay here studying them under my eyelids, one of them approaches me and her lips are by my throat. Then I sense the count in room, and as soon as I feel him, he rips the young woman away from me, far beyond angry. Dracula tells them to leave immediately, for that I am his property, not theirs. But the count promises them that once Dracula is done with me, I am all theirs to have. I listen and feel a deep, terrible knowing I have become tangled up in something I wish I wasn't involved in. Then the Count tosses a small child out of the sack he was carrying and throws it to the three women to feed 
In shock and terror I passed out.